Hello, and welcome to my series of talks on communication. My name is Dr. Marquita Berg, and I am an emeritus professor at San Jose State, which simply means that I re retired. Uh, but in my retirement, I wanted to continue to talk and teach people about communication uh, because it's my favorite topic, of course. And it's my favorite topic because as an undergraduate, every course that I took in communication, it felt like they were talking about me. I learned so much about myself and I learned about other people and it helped me to live a better life. So I want to extend what I've been teaching for 45 years out into the community so that the community can benefit from this knowledge. So I'm talking about communication and also the other thing I want to do is I want to help people to understand what we do in that field because people are always saying, oh you mean you teach English? No, I don't teach writing, I teach talking and so we're going to talk about communicating, talking with people in our lives. I created this series of shows in order to help us do that. I have one channel that deals with interpersonal communication, another one that deals with multicultural communication. And I hope you will come to visit me on each one. So let's start with the conversation about what is the value of uh, communication. I want to say that often when you see these surveys of which degrees make the most money, always communications degrees are at the bottom of the list. And the fact is that communication degrees are at the top of the list because there's no job where you don't need communication. And furthermore, with a communication degree, you can do many, many things where the degree itself may not be named, but your knowledge base and your skills are rooted in the study of communication. So it's not the least amount, it's the most amount. Um, so I want to talk about um, how important communication is and how important words are by talking about mythology. Uh, mythology, they have this category of stories called origin stories. And origin stories are about how the world began, how did the universe come about. Uh, most often in places, in stories where they have a supreme being, here's the interesting thing. And this, come, this comes from the book Myths and Knowing an introduction to world mythology. Uh, very often in origin myth, something is coming out of the supreme person's mouth. They talk, they make a sound, or sometimes they even vomit uh, out onto the earth and then that's how we're created. So early people understood the word, the power of the word. Um, and so we, we are now wanting to understand that in our modern day. Um, now, I want us, uh, us to think about what's the function of communication. What are the functions of communication? Why are we studying this? Well, the first one is to help us to develop our higher mental processes. And our higher mental processes include the ability to think. We know that if people don't talk to babies, if they don't talk to the baby, then babies will not become human beings. We talk them into humanity. And the next thing is, their minds won't develop. We know that acquisition of knowledge and acquisition of intellect go along together. So if people are not talking to children, they won't learn to think. We have our internal dialogue. Internal dialogue means that we are communicating with ourselves. Communication involves memory. It involves planning. Uh, Good communication helps a child understand that they are autonomous, I'm separate from the rest of the world, uh, recognition of self, and it helps us to learn. So basically, talking to children, talking to other human beings is one way that they learn and develop their skills. So in my classes, I, I do a lot of talking. My students talk and my students are allowed to ask questions because if they don't ask questions, then they don't learn. Also, if they don't ask questions, I won't know what it is they don't know. So uh, we develop our thinking processes through talking. And uh, we, we can see that in the commercial on the first five. Uh, California has a program called the first five. And they say, talk, read, sing. Those are the three things. And how we uh, develop the ability to think. So that's very, very important. Uh, and those of us who have young children, and we spend time on our cell phones, we spend time on games. We actually have research coming out now showing us that the children don't develop as well. Children who do a lot of screen time, 
have a delay in their vocabulary uh, acquisition. So we don't we want to talk to them, not show them things uh, on screen. If we ignore them, we interact with them, uh, they may feel lonely. And we have other surveys that show us that our teenagers are the loneliest in the past 50 years on surveys about that. They're lonely. Why? Because nobody's talking to them and not allowing them to talk. So one of the things that I do is when I see my oldest son, I sit down and let him talk. And I let him talk as long as he wants to. Sometimes he comes home and he talks for four hours. And I just listen to him and interact with him because he doesn't live at home. He lives in a group home for the disabled. And so I let him talk so that I can know. The second function of communication is socialization. Uh, that's the second function. And it can be defined as the ability to understand and utilize the rules of society. It allows us, A, to work in concert uh, with each other. It provides security. It helps us to build. It helps us to work together in order to survive. Socialization is very important. There are some people who, don't, who can't be socialized. I'll put it like that. There are some people who don't, don't uh, acquire socialization, and usually those people are in jail very often. That's where they end up because they don't understand the rules or being taught the wrong rules or simply uh, ignore the rules. Uh, the second thing is socialization is a way of communicating and connecting with other human beings. For example, I found that as I've uh, seasoned, I don't want to say I'm old, but as I've become more seasoned, I feel a little bit more <clears throat> lonely and disconnected because many of my friends have retired. Many of them have some of them have passed away. Uh, some of them uh, simply can't get around anymore to go to lunches or go to concerts to do things together. And I feel that I'm disconnected. I don't have people. To, I used to have people to call and talk to. Don't have that as much. So communication allows us to feel connected. It helps us to fit in with society. Uh, I had a student once who said, I think he said he had two friends. Only two friends. Now. Of course, it's okay to have only two friends, but he stayed with these friends during his youth, and he started feeling isolated. He had b bad self-concept, etc., and so forth. But in order to fit into so society, we need to be talking about how to do that. My parents talked to me about how to dress, how to walk, how to take care of my hair, uh, how to communicate with other people so that I'm not offensive. Uh, so how do we fit in with society? D. It helps us to understand the rules and guidelines of relationships. Uh, very often people think, you know, uh, that the school is supposed to teach our children the guidelines for relationships. No, that's not true. We don't have time to teach that because we have content that they have to learn. It is the, it is the role of the family and the parent to teach their child, children the rules and guidelines of relationships. And so I'm hoping that people will take that responsibility back. Lastly, um, socialization helps us to learn about society. What is our society? What are we doing here? What are we supposed to expect? Uh, how should we function? Those things come through communication. And in fact, human beings are social animals. We tend to have better physical, social, and emotional health with regular talking, regular listening, and behaving and interacting with other people. We know that, that we can become, we can be more healthy if we have relationships. The last function of communication is to control or regulate or influence the behavior of first self and then others, uh, not the other way around. So the first thing that communication does is allow us to direct our own behavior through thinking. Uh, we talk to ourselves basically and we tell ourselves what to do and what not to do. One of the triumphs of parents is when their child can say, no, never shy away from that. All right. Now, one of the things that we strive to do as parents is to get our children to think to themselves so that they can direct their own behavior. After all, we can't always be able to do that. After I adopted a child and he did not command to, he did not respond to command voice, uh, I became very worried because every morning he would get up and he would crawl down the hallway and he would try to stick his finger in the electric socket. So, of course, I went out right away and got those little plugs that you put in the socket. 
Uh, I tried all those things like redirecting him, saying no, move him away. None of that worked. So I got the little plugs, and lo and behold, the next morning when he walked down, the, crawled down the hall, he tried to pick the plugs out. And I thought, oh my God, this child's going to kill himself. So in order for him to direct at his own behavior, I started giving him a few squats on his leg every morning when he went there. No, don't do that. No, don't do that. And it took me a total of 14 days. Uh, after 14 days, he crawled down the hallway. He stopped by the power conduit. He looked at it, and you, I could fir finally see those wheels turning. He was thinking, should I touch it or no? And so he decided... Wow, I thought I had a triumph then. He decided to walk, to crawl on back. And I, and I felt, okay, I've had a, a good thing here. So we want them to learn to direct their own behavior. Uh, and we want them to learn to direct their own behavior uh, without having external, uh, external consequences. In other words, you don't pay them to behave well. Uh, they have to learn how to behave well for the sake of doing that. The second... Uh, function in terms of control is to wreck the behavior of others. Um, we're not trying to control other people, uh, but we want to um, direct their behavior in terms of how they should treat us. Uh, we need to teach them. Uh, we want to have relationships with them. So we try to direct the behavior of others. For example, in interpersonal communication, we want to talk to people about how they should treat us and how we will treat them. And one of the first things I say is, own it. You need to tell people how to treat you. Don't think that they should guess it. You heard that. Well, if you love me, you would know what I want. That's bullcrap because none of us are mind readers. And it's your job to help regulate that other person's behavior by telling them what you want, telling them how to treat you, how to not, you don't want them to treat you. And you should be doing that in all situations. Lastly, as we say control and influence, we want to influence others so that we can take care of our needs. We live in a society where we don't grow our own food. Um, we used to grow our own food when I was a child. We had a garden and we did all our vegetables. Uh, but we didn't grow meat. We were on, we're not on the farm, so we had to buy meat. Then that means that we have to influence other people to give us money. Uh, so we had, to, we had to get a job. And you get a job, what? By the way you communicate. We have our own clothes. We went to the store and bought them. But in order to do that, you got to have money. So you have to be able to communicate to get hired and stay on a job. So we influence others so that we can take care of our needs, not just materially, but also emotionally, spiritually, uh, take care of our needs. So uh, since most of us don't grow our own foods, we don't make our own clothes, uh, hey, we don't print our own money, although there have been many who tried it. We have to communicate with others to acquire uh, work and, and to then generate money. So I'd like to bring this, this conversation to a close by saying that communication is one of the most powerful forces on the earth. The only force that's more powerful than communication is thinking. you got to have a thought first. And once you have a thought, then you uh, communicate that through your verbal and nonverbal. Uh, it's so important that early civilizations equated with creating the universe. Uh, understanding the process of communication can improve our relationships in every context. Even with ourselves, we can improve it by learning how to communicate. Um, we know we, we can improve our social situations. And a lot of people forget we can improve our educational experience by uh, learning how to communicate. And, of course, in the employment arena. Every survey of employers say in the top ten things they're looking for, Ability to communicate is there always. So we want to learn how to communicate and understand the importance of it. Effective communication helps us to think better. That's the first function. It helps us to work better. That's the social function. And it helps us to attain, obtain the resources that we need to lead productive lives. So I'm so happy that you joined me today uh, to learn about communication and what it is and why it's important so that you can begin to apply what you learn in uh, on the uh, n next lectures uh, that, uh, and learn why you need to apply it. Uh, don't forget to click on the link down under the video to see the PowerPoint that ac accompanies this so that you don't just have the 20-minute lecture, but you also have things that you can read 
uh, at your pace and learn more about. You, you are here with Dr. Marquita Bird, and I am a professor at San Jose State, and my series is about communication and learning to do it in all settings so that we can live our best life.